Hey guys, what's up? This is the Blender Bro, and I'm here with a Blender Quick Tip. In this Quick Tip, we are going to go over audio mix down in the Video Sequence Editor. So of course we go to the Video Sequence Editor, and right here in the Sequencer, I have some footage and audio files from Tears of Steel. And of course, if we play back, we can hear some audio, but also we can see some video in the Image Preview window. Now what I want to do with this sequence is I want to convert my whole sequence into a series of PNG image files, and, but also I want to convert all my audio strips into one single audio strip so that way I don't have to come back in here and sync up all the audio files with my image sequences. Well with uh, audio, Blender's audio mixdown feature, this could be very easy to get around because all I have to do is just hit the audio mixdown button and Blender will convert all your sound strips in the video sequence editor into one single audio strip. So that's pretty cool. So, before you actually do this, you need to make sure you have the current release of Blender prior to Blender 2.7. In this case, we'll ha we have Blender 2.7a, the, the current release at the time of this recording. Um, I'm pretty sure that um, any versions older than this will, won't, we won't have this working. But uh, make sure you go to Blender.org and get the current release, which in this case is Blender 2.7a, okay? So after you create your video sequence and put your audio files on the timeline, we go back up to the default layout, and after you set your resolution, percentage, and frame rate, in this case we'll go for 1080p at 100% at 24 frames per second, and I set the anti-analysis to 5, go down here to output, and set the file format to PNG. Don't choose JPEG or BMP because that will give low quality image files. Choose PNG. That's the best. And in the co in the color, what does that say? Uh, in the color depth, set it to 816 and set the compression to 100%. And then set, and then make sure RGB is enabled. Okay, okay? If you set it, if you enable RGBA, also the Alpha, chan alpha channel will be rendered in the sequence as well as the red, blue, and green uh, channels. If you choose RGB, only the red, blue, green, blue channels will only be rendered and not the alpha channel. Any alpha channels will be released, will be rendered in a black format. So choose RGB and in the output, choose the location of where you want to save your image sequences. I've created a folder on my desktop right here. Tears of Steel image sequence and inside image sequence and give your file a name, frame number is okay, and we'll go to accept, and then afterward, after you set your output, go up here to render, and then click animation, and let the whole thing render out. So in the meantime, I have finished rendering my sequence, and I could tell because the end frame right here um, has finished rendering, so I could, so in this case, the end frame is frame number 765, and if we take a look at our files right here, we can see that each frame has been rendered out into a PNG. And of course, we can skim through these frames one at a time. So now what I want to do next is I want to combine all my audio strips in the video sequence editor um, into one single audio strip. And the way we're going to do that is with Blender's audio mixdown feature. So the way to do that is under the render tab, you'll see that there's a button called audio. And if we you click that, you'll see that the file browser window opens up. It'll ask you, you to give your audio file a name. So in this case, we'll call it audio and where you want to save it to. This is okay. And you'll also notice there's a tab down here called Mixdown. And I'll try to explain these accurately as I can. First off, the container. The container is basically the format for your audio file. So in this case, we have the most common WAV, OGG, MP3, MPEG2, uh, MKV, FAAC, FC3. Now, this may get updated with newer audio formats, so go ahead and choose one format. In this case, we'll choose MP3. Now, the format, uh, you could choose either 16-bit uh, signed or 32-bit signed. I'm going to choose 32-bit signed, so we go a little higher. Now, the bit rate down here, that's basically, you know, the... Well, well basically, uh, by, de by default, it's going to give you a low-quality... 192 kilobytes per second bitrate. You want to go a little bit higher than that. You can, um, the most common is 320 kilobytes per second, but the highest you can go in this case is 512. I always use 384 kilobytes per second, so how you can set it however you like. 
just do a couple of tests to make sure it works. So in this case, we're going to choose 384. Now to split channels, this um, this option this option determines if your uh, um, if your audio strips are stereo. Um, normally, if you look at an au a stereo audio file, you'll see that there are two channels: one for the left side and one for the right side. A mono audio uh, audio file only contains one um, uh, uh, <clears throat> channel. Sorry, sorry about that. Um, um, but basically, if you enable this, if if there are any stereo audio files in in your sequence, what will happen is Blender is going to separate those channels into two separate audio files. If that is true, you're going to need now. At, if you enable this, you're going to have to come back in the sequencer and uh, sync up both audio files along with your sequence. Leaving this disabled will actually um, c uh, Blender will will combine all the audio strips into one single stereo audio strip so both channels will be rendered so um now you you can leave this disabled if you want to but let me remind you uh if you hit audio if you hit mix down up here at the top there may be a chance depending on the length of your audio sequence and the um bit rate of your audio blender may crash um which is a very common problem so I recommend to order, uh, in order to prevent this problem, is to choose split channels. So that way, Blender has a little bit, a little less um, memory to cache and a and a lot less work. It'll just create two audio files for you to work with. The only problem with this is that you need to go back into the sequencer and sync up those two audio strips. But um, in this case, since uh, but for me, since uh, I'm willing to take take the risk and. Of course, my sequence, uh, my audio strips are very short. I'll leave this disabled. So I'll leave this disabled and click Mix Down. Now, when you click Mix Down, Blender is going to combine all of the audio strips in your uh, video sequence into one single audio strip. And once again, depending on the length, it could take a couple minutes or or even longer, depending on the length. So I could tell it's so I know that it's done. And if we take a look back here we see that a new file audio has been created and if we play that we could see that's we could see that our audio files has been combined into one single audio strip so now that's all that is left to do is to bring them back bring our image sequence and audio uh, file back into the sequencer and combine them into a single movie file so what we're going to do um, we're going to go back to the video sequence editor now before um, now before we actually do this, one one thing I do I did do before I start editing is I enabled audio scrubbing so that way I, when I scrub through the timeline, the audio scrubs along with it. And I also enabled AV sync so that Blender automatically syncs the file no matter um, how difficult the sequence is. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a new scene in Blender. But before we do that, let's rename this uh, first scene to Sequence 1 for the first sequence. And we'll hit the plus icon, New, and we're going to call this scene Sequence 2. Now you'll notice that the end frame is incorrect. We'll talk about that here in a sec. But for right now, under Playback, enable Audio Scrubbing. AV sync to so make sure that Blender syncs the audio files correctly and frame dropping uh, just in case. Audio scrubbing is for you to scrub through your audio um, when you are editing. So first off we're going to import the audio sequence. So we're going to go to add image and we're going to navigate to uh, the image sequence and we're going to and right here here's our sequence and we're going to select all those frames with A, add image strip and we're going to move this to the second channel. And you'll see that it behaves just like a movie file. Of course, the end frame is not correct, so we're going to have to correct that manually. So I could see that right here, that the end frame is 765. But is that really correct? Let's see. And... Yep, that looks correct. So now, all so now we're just gonna go to frame number seven hundred sixty-five. Hit E for end frame and the timeline. Now all that's left to do is to add in the image sequence. I mean the audio sequence. So we're gonna go to Add Sound and we're going to find Audio.mp3 
and we're going to leave it at channel 1 and then go to add sound strip and in order to, um, to cache it into the uh, memory we'll enable ca caching and we're going to enable draw waveform so we can see the waveform and if we play back it's a little choppy but we can see that our image sequence is playing with our audio so now all that's left to do is to convert the image sequence, uh, to convert our sequence into a movie file. And the way we do that is we go back to the default layout, switch to the second scene, and we're going to change the render presets right here. Um, 1080p is fine. We'll set the percentage to 100%. Frame rate's also okay. We'll set the anti and aliasing to, to 5. Now, the output, set the file format to H.264 or MPEG, we'll choose H.264 for this tutorial, enable RGB for red, green, and blue channels, and under encoding, um, set the format to QuickTime, set the, leave the codec at H.264, set the audio codec to A AAC, and set the bitrate to um, higher, like about 200 that means 320 or all the way, like for example 384. I'm going to choose 384 because that's why I like the most. It'll be fine. And of course, choose your output for your file. We're going to call this one Final Sequence, Final Sequence Render. Hit Enter and then hit Accept. And then after all that's done, we're going to go ahead and click animation to render the whole thing out into a movie file. So in the meantime our sequence is finished rendering and if we open up our folder and if we play the file back this should be the final result. So yeah, that was pretty basic, but that should be enough to at least get you started with learning about audio mixdown in Blender. So yeah, that was pretty much a quick introduction to audio mixdown in Blender. I hope you find this fe feature useful. I am the Blender Bro, and as always, keep on blending, bro! Start. Four, three, two, one.